Okay, hi everyone. So welcome to our lecture about Safe Spaces Act, or also known as RA 11313. So disclaimer, um, I I am going to share you what I have learned about this one after attending webinars and also after reading the RA 11313. So I'm not a lawyer. If you have any concerns beyond my knowledge, maybe you can just comment down below and then we'll have somebody to help you answer those questions or concerns. Now let's define first what is Safe Spaces Act or RA 11313, which was previously known as the Anti-Bastos Law. So this one is defined as an act defining gender-based sexual harassment in streets, public spaces, online, workplaces, and educational or training institutions, providing protective measures and also prescribing penalties. Okay, so meron na tayo Anti-Sexual Harassment Act. Pero this one, let's take a look at this RA 11.313. Now, it is a special law which seeks to eradicate all forms of sexual harassment by recognizing that both men and women must have equality, security, and safety not only in private, but also on the streets, public spaces, online, as well as in workplaces and educational institutions. Okay, this law, it must encompass in siya kumpara dun sa anti-sexual harassment, wherein it has considered now even sa public spaces, okay, and even online. And also, both men and women, and the LGBTQ plus community ay kasama dito sa RA 11313. Now, what's the background? An overwhelming 88% of women aged 18 to 24 years old experience sexual harassment in the streets. While wolf whistling and cat calling are the common cases, other forms of sexual harassment include lascivious language, Stalking, rubbing or touching, indecent gestures, exhibitionism, and public masturbation. 58% of these incidents take place on the streets and small alleys. They have also been reported to happen in public vehicles, washrooms, schools, and workplaces. That's why in RA 11.313, na-specify din kung ano yung mga public spaces, kung saan pwede mangyari yung sexual harassment na yun, okay? We're in, in this lecture, isa-isahin natin yung mga different forms of sexual harassment in public spaces. Um, bigyan lang natin ulit ng background yung RA 7877, the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995. It is the act, the act is committed by a person who, having authority, influence, or moral ascendancy over another, in a work or training or education environment, demands, request, or otherwise requires any sexual favor from the other, regardless of whether the demand, request, or requirement for submission is accepted. Okay, sa anti-sexual harassment, meron kasi ina-emphasize yan na moral ascendancy. Wherein, for example, in school setting, ang perpetrator would be the teacher. Or, let's say supervisor. Tapos, ang victim would be the subordinate or pag ba, teacher, student, ang victim ay estudyante. Pero in reality, may mga cases naman na pwede ang mga bastos ay ang estudyante. So, dito covered na. Sa anti-sexual harassment, hindi covered yon because of nga, dapat may authority, yung perpetrator, at saka may moral ascendancy over dun sa victim. But in RA 11.313, very specific na na kahit estudyante ang mambasto sa teacher, pasok, dito siya papasok. Even with this carefully crafted law, this is, I'm referring to the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act, it appears that the aforementioned law does not curtail sexual harassment in the Philippines. So, hindi niya na-cover lahat ng forms na sexual harassment in the Philippines. Therefore, the PCW or the Philippine Commission on Women the primary policy-making and coordinating body on women and gender equality concerns opines that the confinement of sexual harassment to the existence of authority, influence, or moral ascendancy between the offender and then the offended party 
unduly restricts its application. Letting the same act between about peers. So, pwede naman mayayari yun. And co-workers to run and check. That's why we have the RA 11313. So, pwede naman pareho kayo ng rank. Pareho kayo ng position. So, hindi kasi siya papasok sa Anti-Sexual Harassment Act. Dahil walang moral ascendancy. The same act committed against the superior officer is also not within its purview. On April 17, 2019, the Safe Spaces Act, or previously known as the Bawal, the ba Bawal Bastos Bill, was signed into law. Its aim is to ensure the individual sense of personal space and public safety. So individual, hindi, na siya, hindi lang siya female, hindi lang siya male. Then, the Safe Spaces Act addresses gender-based sexual harassment in public areas such as streets, privately owned places pero open to the public, and public utility vehicles among others. It also extends the protection even to cyberspace and provides for prohibited acts and their corresponding penalties. Okay, again, I would like to emphasize that RA 11313 is any person, not only women, it includes men, and LGBT and children are also protected. It is not only women who are protected under the Safe Spaces Act, because it recognizes that anyone can perpetrate sexual harassment and anyone can be a victim of sexual harassment. Okay, what are the different salient features of this Safe Spaces Act? One, it talks about gender-based sexual harassment. Two, it also expands the scope of Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995. As I have mentioned, mas malawak na yung coverage ng RA 11313. It also strengthens the administrative mechanisms against sexual harassment in workplaces and, and in educational and training institutions. Very detailed na rin yung responsibilities ng administration na employers in RA 11313. It also recognizes that this can be committed between peers or by a subordinate to a superior, by a student to a teacher, or by a trainee to a trainer. So wala na yung moral ascendancy. Okay? Or yung lagi na, may authority yung perpetrator. Okay, it, this one also penalizes sexual harassment, which also occurs in other environments such as public spaces and kasama na rin dito yung online platforms. So, titignan natin later what are the different forms ng gender-based online sexual harassment. This also outlines the addi additional duties and corresponding liabilities for the employers, heads of schools, training institutions to ensure that sexual harassment complaints in their respective institutions are addressed properly. So, makikita nyo lahat yan, very specific na kung ano yung dapat gawin ng school, ng employers, and ano din yung kanilang liability if they will not address any case ng sexual harassment or if they will not address sexual harassment under as described by RA 11313. Also, both men and women must have equality, security, and safety not only in private but also in or on streets, public spaces, online platforms, workplaces, educational and training institutions. So we have here, sexual harassment in public spaces includes the following. So you have here, gender-based streets and public spaces sexual harassment, gender-based online sexual harassment, qualified gender-based streets, public spaces and online sexual harassment, gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace, and also gender-based sexual harassment in educational and training institutions. So, isa-isahin po natin yan. Okay, ano ba yung public spaces? So, here are examples of public spaces. We have here, pwedeng school, pwedeng pila sa jeep, pila sa UV, even the um, evacuation centers, parks, Mismo sa jeep, sa public utility vehicles, sa offices. So, th those are considered to be public spaces. Even restaurant, churches. So, yun yung mga example ng public spaces. Public spaces refer to street and alleys 
public parks, schools, buildings, malls, bars, restaurants, transportation terminals, markets, spaces used as evacuation centers, government offices, public utility vehicles, as well as private vehicles covered by app-based transport, yung mga <clears throat> grab, so that is an example, network services and other recreational spaces such as, but not limited to cinema halls, theaters, and spas. So lahat yun, public spaces. So any sexual harassment na nangyari dun sa mga public spaces na yun ay covered by RA 11313. Okay? So this is an example, yung wolf whistling. Okay, so let's have number one. Gender-based streets and public spaces, sexual harassment. How is this committed? Unwanted and uninvited sexual actions, advances, remarks against any person, regardless of the motive, and has threatened one's sense of personal space and physical safety, and is also committed in streets and public spaces. So that's how we define it. Mamaya tingnan ninyo natin yung mga different acts covered by this one. So, ayan, we have cursing, wolf whistling, cat calling. Yung wolf whistling, yung two-tone is a two-tone whistle. Pag ganun ba, may dumadaan sexy, tas nagbi-whistle na ganun. That's wolf whistling. So, pasok na siya sa RA 11313. Cat calling, leering and intrusive gazing, taunting, unwanted invitations, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, sexist slurs, and also persistent unwanted comments on one's appearance, Relentless requests for personal details, such as name, contact, and social medias or destination, use of words, gestures, or actions that ridicule on the basis of sex, gender, or sexual orientation, identity, or expression. So, isa-isay natin sila. Okay, catcalling. Rude sexual remarks made by men to women passing by. So, ang example na narinig ko, limbawa daw, Dumadaan ka, tapos may nagsabi 150. So, that's already catcalling. Wolf whistling, yun nga, nabanggit ko na yung whistle na two-tone. Pag may dumaang sexy, tapos nag-whistle na ganon. So, that's already covered by RA 11313. Okay, meron din yung leering or intrusive gazing. Yung looking or gazing in a lascivious or unpleasant way. Yung iba yung makatitig sa'yo, yung parang... Iba yung pakiramdam mo pag tinititigan ka niya. Parang nababastos ka na. So, that's also included. Okay, so let's talk about yung misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist slurs. Ano yung misogyny? These are using phrases na parang in-express mo yung galit mo sa mga babae. Like, mga babae salot, that's misogynistic. Then, transphobia naman, having or showing a dislike or prejudice against transsexual or transgender people. Halimbawa, doon sa mga bading naman or sa lesbian. So, we also have this. Homophobia is the fear, hatred, discomfort with, or mistrust of people who are lesbian, gay, and bisexual. Like, here are examples of terms. Yung bayot, kadiri. Tapos, yung term ng mga babae, pangkama lang. So, yun yung mga terms or expressions. Like, sexist slur naman is a term of disparagement used to refer to members of a given gender, sex, or sexual orientation in a derogatory or judgmental manner, manner, like yung phrases that I have mentioned. Or any advances, whether verbal or physical, and that is unwanted and has threatened one's sense of personal space, physical safety, and committed in public spaces such as alleys, roads, sidewalks, and parks. So, yeah, ito rin, covered din ito. Persistent and invited comments or gestures on a person's appearance. Then, relentless requests for personal details. Ano ba? May gusto magtanong ng number mo sa unang pagkakataon, then di ka pumayag. Tapos, nagkulit na nagkulit. Tapos, kinulit ka pa ng kinulit. Tapos, feeling mo, you are threatened. So, that's already part of or covered in RA 11313. Statement of sexual comments and suggestions. Yan, public masturbation or flashing of private parts, yung tinatawag nilang exhibitionist, and then also groping, yung panghihipo. So, those are some examples or acts na sexual harassment acts in public spaces as defined by RA 11313.
Okay, what are the penalties imposed upon the violators of this law? So, depende dun sa offense. Like, first offense, we have 1,000 in community service for 12 hours. Plus, meron pa silang gender sensitivity training. That's why we are already conducting gender sensitivity to increase awareness at hindi na tayo mabiktima or hindi rin tayo maging uh, violator ng law na to. Second offense, 6 to 10 days imprisonment or a fine of 3,000. And then third offense, 11 to 30 days or a fine of 10,000 for the following acts like cursing, catcalling, yung nag whistle leering, intrusive gazing, unwanted invitations, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, sexist slurs, and persistent uninvited comments, and related acts, kasama yan dun sa, yan yung penalty. Yung the following acts, of course, they have different pe penalty, like making offensive body gestures at someone, as exposing private parts, for sexual gratification, of the perpetrator, which with the effect of demeaning, harassing, threatening, and intimidating the offended party. So, dito rin yung public masturbation and yung panghihipo, ito na yung mga penalty niyan. So, syempre, ibang level na yung offense, no? So, we have for the first offense, fine of 10,000 pesos and community service and also gender sensitivity training. And second offense naman, 11 to 30 days of imprisonment and a fine of 15,000. Then you have third offense, one month and one day to six months imprisonment and a fine of 20,000 pesos. So another act or sexual harassment, street public sexual harassment, eye stalking. Yun di ba, may, meron, paglabas mo ng bahay, meron sunod ng sunod sa'yo or meron tingin ng tingin sa'yo, kasama na rin yan sa RA 11313. Another one, any touching, pinching, or brushing against the genitalia. So, as you can see, mas grabe na yung offense na to. Uh, breasts, inner thighs, face, buttocks, or any part of the victim's body, even when not accompanied by the previous acts. So, ito has different penalties also. First offense, 11 to 30 days imprisonment or a fine of up to 30,000 pesos. Then also an attendance of gender, to gender sensitivity training conducted by PNP. Second offense naman, we have one month, one, one day to six months of imprisonment and a fine of up to 50,000 pesos. Third offense naman, minimum period na or maximum period of imprisonment and a fine of 100,000 pesos. Yan. Itong mga sample na offenses na to, may prescribe in 1 to 10 years. So, within 10 years lang. Alimbawa, nangyari to sa'yo 11 years ago, wala na yung hindi ka na pwedeng magreklamo. Okay? Now, sino yung mag-a-attend dun sa mga reklamo na to? LGU has the following duties. LGUs shall bear the primary responsibility. Yun daw, sangguni ang bayan, dapat meron din silang, uh, meron din silang responsibility on this. Should pass an ordinance which shall localize the applicability of this act within 60, 60 days of its effectivity. So, by now, dapat meron na silang ordinansa. Disseminate or post in conspicuous places a copy of this act. So, dapat pala, pag tinitingnan natin yung public spaces natin, merong kopya ng RA 11313. And also, provide measures to prevent gender-based sexual harassment sa educational institutions. Pwede sila mag-conduct ng seminars sa mga educational institutions. Pwede rin sila magbigay ng flyers as long as uh, they are disseminating information. Ano yung mga implement? Sino-sino yung mga implementing bodies? We have here MMDA. Metro Manila De Development Authority, of course, sa Manila. We also have the local units of PNP. Then, meron din tayong Women and Children's Protection Desk sa PNP. And then, PCW, DILG. Ang DILG, dapat i-check niya yung kung nagagawa ng LGU yung kanilang responsibilities. 
And then we also have Department of Information and Communications Technology because saklaw din niya yung gender-based online sexual harassment. And then meron tayong tinatawag na ASHRAE, the anti-sexual harassment enforcers na nasa streets. Like, pag ganibaw, nahuli nila, nasa aktong nahuli nila yung, uh, let's say, wolf whistling or yung cat calling na nakita nila sa akto, so pwede na nilang hulihin. Tapos anti-sexual harassment desk in all barangay and city hall. So dapat meron tayo anti-sexual harassment desk sa ating mga barangay. And also, dapat meron ding action ng LGU kung saan minimake sure na merong mga CCTVs because yun yung pwedeng maging evidences. Okay, that's the first part. Second part would be gender-based online sexual harassment. So, tignan natin ngayon. Paano naman yung sa online? It includes acts that use information and commu communication technology in terrorizing and intimidating victims. So, pwede yan sa personal message, email, uh, posting online. Pasok dyan sa RA11313. Kaliba ito? Tingnan natin kung sinong guilty dito. Ito si Pedro. Pag nakita niya nag-post ng bagong picture sa FB ang friend niya, isa-save niya ito at isa-share sa messages sa ibang kaibigan at pag-uusapan nila yun. Diba? Meron kang GC. Tapos, meron siya, let's say, picture na pinos. Then, medyo sexy yung picture niyang pinos. Tapos, pinag-usapan niya siya sa GC. So, pwede yun sa gender-based online sexual harassment. Okay. It is committed through, pwede rin yung pagaliba, merong psychological and emotional threats online. Ang maganda lang sa online, madaling makakalap ng ebidensya dahil you just have to screenshot. So, matibay na ebidensya na yun sa online. Unwanted sexual misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, sexist remarks and comments online. Nabanggit ko na yung sample kanina. For example, nag-post ka ng mga ganong phrases. So, that means it's also a gender-based online sexual harassment. Invasion of victims' privacy through cyber-stalking and incessant messaging. Okay? Uploading and sharing without the consent of the victim. Any form of media that contains photos, voice, or video with sexual content, kung mo walang paalam, so pasok siya sa gender-based online sexual harassment. Unauthorized recording and sharing of any of the victim's photos, videos on online. Impersonating identities of victims online or posting lies about victims to harm their reputation. And filing false abuse reports. You among filing false abuse reports, yung Di ba pwede ngayon sa Facebook, ire-report mo yung content nung isang tao? So, nag-file ka ng false abuse report para lang matahimik yung biktima. So, kasama siya dito sa part 2. Okay, so the implementing bodies for gender-based online sexual harassment, we have this PNP Anti-Cyber Crime Group or PNP ACG. This is the National Operational Support of PNP primary responsible for the implementation of pertinent Philippine laws on cybercrime and also shall receive complaints of gender-based sec online sexual harassment and develop an online mechanism for reporting real-time gender-based online sexual harassment and apprehend perpetrators. So, sila din yung huhuli sa perpetrators, yung PNP and the cybercrime group. Meron din tayong Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center of the DICT shall coordinate with PNP ACG to prepare appropriate and effective measures to monitor and penalize gender-based online sexual harassment. Ano na may mga penalties? If natural person, we have this uh, imprisonment. We have six months and one day to six years. And then, a fine of not less than 100,000 pesos, but not more than 500,000 pesos. If juridical person, and ba, para is like an organization, let's say, publishing company, ba, newspaper, or station, 
license or franchise shall be automatically deemed revoked and the persons liable shall be the officers of the organization, including the editor, the broadcasters, the reporters, and so on. If alien naman, subject to deportation proceedings after serving the sentence and payment of fines. Now, kapag online, take note that it's imprescriptible. So, that means, wala siya yung parang may duration lang ng validity. Like, liba nangyari siya for 15 years ago, tapos meron ka pa rin ev evidensya. So, pwede mo pa rin siyang ireklamo. Unlike yung kanina, na ang prescription lang ay 10 years, for online, walang prescription. Yung third part naman, we have the qualified gender-based streets, public spaces, and online sexual harassment. So, meron to, ang penalty would be higher in degree with, will be applied in the following cases. Halimbawa, sa public utility vehicles, ang perpetrator would be the driver, tapos ang biktima, ang offended party is the passenger, so ang penalty ng driver would be higher. Then next, if the offended party is minor, a senior citizen, PWD, or a breastfeeding mother nursing her child, pa meron nagpapa-breastfeed, tapos nabastos siya, ang penalty ng perpetrator would be higher. Then, offended party is diagnosed also with mental problem, tending to impair consent. So, higher din yung magiging penalty. Perpetrator, member ng PNP or member ng AFP. And also, if it's committed by in a government agency offering frontline services, halimbawa may magpapaswab test, tapos nagustuhan niyo yung frontliner, tapos nabastos niya, or let's say nahipuan niya yung frontliner, so yung penalty niya would also be higher. Kasi it also happened in a government agency, then, ang, ang, if ang perpetrator is also a government employee, higher din yung kanyang penalty. Okay, next part. We also have this gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace. It includes the following, unwelcome sexual advances, requests, or demand for sexual favors, or any act of sexual na nature. Pwede verbally, pwede physically, Pwede through the use of technology, so pwede yan personal messages, email. So, that would have a detrimental effect on the conditions of individuals' employment or education, job performances, or opportunities. The ne next, a conduct of sexual nature and other conduct based on sex affecting the dignity of the person, which is unwelcome. And yung parang very offensive na dun sa biktima. Sometimes, in the workplace, meron tayong, meron siguro nagbibiro on like green joke. Hindi niya motibo na wala siyang masama intention or wala siyang ibang motibo, pero yung pinagsasabihan niya ng green jokes na yun, let's say, uh, na-offend na, or feeling niya threat na yun sa kanya, nawabastos na siya, so pwede na siyang magreklamo. And then, i-check na lang yung veracity, no? No statement and of course the evidences. Then a conduct that is unwelcome and pervasive and create yun na intimidate na siya, feeling na you humiliate na siya to sa situation. So pwede na niyang, uh, pwede na siya magsampa ng kaso or magreklamo. Now the following, as I have mentioned, dun sa RA 11.313, malinaw yung duties, sinasabi yung duties ng employer and ano yung dapat gawin ng employer to address these concerns. So we have this, number one, disseminate or post in a conspicuous place a copy of this act. So, dapat pala, if we are going to look at our workplace, so sa mga corner na pwede mangyari yung uh, sexual harassment na yan in, in public space, dapat meron pala tayo dyan um, information or let's say add about or printed material about RA 11.313. Then, provide measures to prevent gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace, such as conduct of seminars, anti-sexual seminars, to increase awareness also or for information dissemination. And pwede rin, liba, mag-install ng mas maraming CCTVs para macha-check natin yung mga places or mare-review kung if ever merong nangyaring sexual harassment in the workplace. And also... 
create an independent internal mechanism or a committee on decorum and investigation to investigate and address complaints of gender-based sexual harassment. So, dapat may CODI. Provide and disseminate in consultation with all persons in the workplace a code of conduct and also a workplace policy. So, malinaw dapat sa ating mga employees yon And it's also the duty of the employer. Then, liability. Kapag hindi niya nagawa yun, let's say, non-implementation of the duties. Uh, meron siyang pa, uh, penalty na not less than 5,000 and then not more than 10,000 10, pesos. Then, meron nagreklamo tapos hindi niya binigyan ng aksyon. Magkakaroon siya ng fine of not less than 10,000 and not more than 15,000. Okay? So, that is for the workplace. Napunta na tayo ngayon doon sa number 5 wherein mas applicable siya sa atin. The gender-based sexual harassment in education and training institutions. All schools, whether public or private, shall designate an officer in charge to receive complaints regarding violations of this act. So, dapat alam din ng mga estudyante saan tayo pwede magreklamo. Like, our Gender and Development Office pwede pumunta ang ating mga estudyante doon if may case ng sexual harassment or the Safe Spaces Act. Then, ensure also that victims provided with a gender-sensitive environment, that they are provided with a gender-sensitive environment that is both respectful to the victim's needs and conducive to truth-telling. And also, uh, it's also a responsibility of the institution to adopt and publish grievance procedures na dapat malinaw din sa ating mga estudyante kung paano sila mag -re reklamo Okay, here are the duties of the school. Upon knowledge of gender-based sexual harassment or sexual violence, the school should promptly investigate na to determine the veracity of such information or knowledge and circumstances under which the acts of gender-based sexual harassment or sexual violence were committed. And dapat magkakaroon ng aksyon. Hindi pwedeng hindi niya papansinin yung reklamo. And then the school must take immediate action to eliminate the same acts to and also to prevent the recurrence okay so dapat ano ba pag nagreklamo ma maiimbestigahan may pag nagreklamo maiimbestigahan agad ang magagawa ng action once a perpetrator naman um I'm still referring to education and training institution is found guilty the educational institution may, res may reserve the right to strip the diploma and also ex issue an expulsion order or para administrative sanction or administrative case. Then, the Committee on Decorum and Investigation of all educational institutions shall address gender-based sexual harassment and online sexual harassment in accordance with the rules and procedures contained in the CODI manual. So, the CODI will be discussed by Dr. Beltran. Duties of school heads. So, ito naman yung expected from the school heads. Disseminate or post a copy of this act. So, ganun din. Information dissemination. So, kailangan pala nakapost ang RA 11313 para aware din ang ating mga estudyante. Next, provide measures to prevent gender-based sexual harassment like information campaigns. And itong training na ginagawa natin, this is also a responsibility ng school. Create an independent internal mechanism or a CODI para maimbestigahan yung mga complaints regarding or related to gender-based sexual harassment. Then provide and disseminate in consultation with all persons in the educational institution a code of conduct or school policy. Siguro pati dun sa mga estudyante, dapat pinapasok na rin yung uh, Safe Spaces Act dun sa kanilang code of conduct. Expressly reiterate the prohibition of gender-based sexual harassment and also prescribe rules or procedures of internal mechanism created under this act and set administrative penalties. So, dapat may malinaw na policy ang institution regarding addressing um, sexual harassment within the description of RA 11313. Okay, liability. Kapag hindi rin na-implement yung mga responsibilities niya, meron siyang penalty na 5,000 
and not more than 10,000 pesos. Pag merong nagreklamo tapos hindi inimbisigan, hindi nagkaroon ng aksyon, so merong kakaroon pa rin ng fine na 10,000 and not more than 15,000. Okay, paano naman kapag minor yung student? Again ha, in RA 11313, hindi na siya laging teacher yung perpetrator, tapos ang biktima estudyante. Pwede ngayon ang maging biktima ay ang mga guro. Okay, pwede rin yung mga super, supervisors o yung mas mga matataas yung rank. Now, uh, may nabanggit before na paano kapag yung mga estudyante nagsasend ng bastos na picture sa teacher. Kaya ingat-ingat tayo ha. Dahil yan, may matibay tayong ebidensya dahil screenshot lang ni teacher yan, then pwede na kayong ereklamo. So ano yung pwede mangyari? Nabanggit kanina, depende dun sa school. Pwede yung strip and diploma or pwede expansion order. Okay? Yung ganun kabigat yung um, act na yan. Minor students who are found to have committed acts of gender-based sexual harassment shall only be held liable for administrative sanctions. Okay? By the school stated in their school handbook. So, yung school handbook natin ang makakapagsabi kung ano yung magiging penalty kapag nag-commit ng sexual harassment under RA 11313. Okay? Meron silang routine inspection, the Department of Education, sa atin CHED, and uh, ganun din ang TESDA wherein they conduct regular spontaneous inspections to ensure compliance of school heads with their obligations under this act. Okay. Then, kapag may reklamo, of course, we ensure confidentiality at any stage of the investigation, prosecution, and trial of the an offense under this act, the rights of the victim and the accused who is a minor shall be recognized. So, confidential yung case. Then, meron ding restraining order. Kahit bago pa mabigay yung final decision, uh, the court may issue an order directing the perpetrator to stay away from the offended party or from the victim. And also to stay away from the residence, sa school, place of employment. So, meron tayong restraining order. And then, remedies and psychological counseling. Yung victim has a right for psychological counseling. Ganon din yung perpetrator. A victim of gender-based, treat public spaces, or online sexual harassment may avail of appropriate remedies as provided for under the law as well as psychological counseling services. Yeah, sa tulong ng LGU, ng DSWD, DOH, at saka PCW. The fees, ang mag-shoulder niyan yung perpetrator. Then, exemptions. Take note of these acts that are legitimate expressions of indigenous culture. Limbawa, uh, may mga indigenous pa rin tayo na nagsusuot sila ng bahag. So, hindi yun dahil gusto nila ipakita yung private part nila, but it's part of their culture. It's part of the tradition. They are exempted. And also, breastfeeding moms. So, nagpapa dede si mommy sa baby niya in public place. So, sabi parang ang bastos naman nun na ano yung sa public place. Hindi yon Kasi breastfeeding is being advocated. So, hindi yun ipipenalize. Okay? So, that is about RA 11.313. So, as I have mentioned, we have different kinds. We have five. Okay. We have five public spaces, sexual harassment. Meron gender-based street and public spaces, sexual harassment. Meron din sa online. Meron din yung qualified gender-based streets, public spaces, online sexual harassment. And then, in the workplace and in the educational institution or in training institutions. Okay. Now, again, ang message natin always for gender sensitivity, for gender sensitivity training is to have respect to one another regardless of the gender. Para hindi tayo mag-violate ng RA 11.3.1.3. Okay? So, if you have questions, just inform us. Kung kaya namin sagutin, pag hindi naman, we will ask somebody uh, who knows better than us para sagutin yung inyong mga queries. Okay?
Sige, bibigay ko na kayo sa inyong um, facilitator. Goodbye!